Now, example six, we're estimating the sum of a series. So in part A, we want to be able to approximate the sum of the series, one over n cubed, by using the sum of the first 10 terms, and then estimate the error involved in this approximation. So in both parts A and B, regardless, we need to know the function as n goes to infinity. So with f of x equal to 1 over x cubed, which satisfies the conditions of the integral test, then we have the following. So we have the function 1 over x cubed going from n to infinity dx is equal to the limit as t approaches infinity, which is the antiderivative becomes negative 1 over 2x squared going from n to t. Now evaluating it from n to t, we get the limit as t approaches infinity of negative 1 over 2t squared plus 1 over 2n squared, which is equal to 1 over 2n squared. Now, approximating the sum of the series by the 10th partial sum, we would have the following. 1 over n cubed would be approximately s subscript 10, which is equal to 1 over 1 cubed plus 1 over 2 cubed plus 1 over 3 cubed, all the way to 1 over 10 cubed. Adding that up is approximately 1.1975. Now, according to the remainder estimate in definition 3, then we have the following. The remainder estimate, when n is equal to 10, is less than or equal to 1 over x cubed dx as 10 goes to infinity, is going to equal 1 over 2 times 10 squared, which is equal to 1 over 200, which would then equal 0 0.005. And so therefore, the size of the error is at most 0 0.005. Now, how many terms are required to ensure that the sum is accurate to within 0 0.0005? Now, accuracy to within 0 0.0005 means that we have to find a value of n such that our subscript n is going to be less than or equal to the value of 0 0.0005. Now since r subscript n is less than or equal to 1 over x cubed dx from n to infinity was equal to 1 over 2 to the n squared. And what we want is to write 1 over 2 n squared is less than 0 0.0005. And we want to be able to solve this inequality. Now solving this inequality we get n squared which is greater than 1 over 0 0.001, which equals 1,000. Or if we take the square root of both sides, then n would be greater than the square root of 1,000, which is approximately 31.6. So we would need 32 terms to ensure accuracy to within 0 0.0005. Now, if we add s subscript n to each side of the inequalities in part 3, then we would get the following. We get s subscript n plus the integral from n plus 1 to infinity of that function. And on the right side, we have s subscript n plus n to infinity of that function. Because s subscript n plus r subscript n is equal to s. Now the inequalities in 4 give a lower bound and an upper bound for s and they provide a more accurate approximation to the sum of the series than a partial sum S subscript N does.